Today I want to talk quickly about a couple of terms that are used quite often interchangeably and often incorrectly. The reason I'm getting picky is because it changes how we use them, it changes how we process them, and it changes how we look at them. The terms are carbon, graphite, and graphene. Carbon is an element. It is composed of a certain atomic configuration. Now carbon can be naturally found in nature in three different forms. One of them is diamond with a crystalline structure. I'm not going to worry about that one. The next one is graphite. Graphite has more of a honeycomb structure and it comes in layers and those layers can be very important to us. Finally is amorphous carbon which is found in like coal and charcoal. This has no specific crystalline structure. Now, carbon, amorphous carbon, you find in things like um, the activated carbon for a fish tank, where they've typically come from coconut shells that have been processed and burned and um, processed into this activated carbon. And then there is graphite, which is typically dug out of the ground and comes naturally occurring in these ma uh, marvelous layers that are so important. The layers are important because of the third term, graphene. Graphene is a one atom thick part of graphite, a one atom thick uh, piece of graphite, if you will, that has special properties, that has very specific properties. It's incredibly strong. It's stronger than diamond in the right direction. It is incredibly conductive electrically. And there's marvelous things that people are even now continuing to find more and more things that they can do with it. It has been very difficult to make, but Robert Murray Smith has come up with a couple of ways, and one in particular that seems like it's especially easy, even for someone like me in a, a home or school laboratory. So we're going to be dealing with each of these elements separately each of these materials separately, I should say. We'll have carbon, and some of it probably like the activated carbon from the uh, charcoals. We will have graphite, and we will have graphene, and we'll be processing them each separately. Now, I don't want to get too picky about graphene. Sometimes people talk about multi-layer graphene. Technically, that might not be able to be called graphene if it has more than one layer. It's good enough. It's fine with me. If you refer to something as that has two, three, four, five, you know, ten, a hundred layers as multi-layer graphene, it's just a slice of graphite, if you will. But I understand where people are going. They're talking. It's a way of uh, talking about how close it is to pure one atom thick graphene. And indeed, I suspect a lot of the materials we will be using and calling graphene will actually be multi-layer graphene in the sense that we may not purify it all the way down to one atom thick in all cases. So I just wanted to make that clear. We're going to be careful about that as we go on through the experiments. And I thank you for your time.